A very warm welcome to everyone. Today, I, Ria Khanna, an intern under Lexus and Company, am here to express my views on the constitutional rights of transgender people in India. In the last video, we talked about who are transgender people and their presence in the Hindu mythology, Jain texts, and their presence in the Mughal Empire. Further, we talked about the problems faced by the transgender people and how their constitutional rights are being violated. Further, I explained the key features of the Transgender Persons Protection of Rights Act 2019 and also stated what is wrong with this particular act. Now, let's talk about important case laws related to the transgender community. The first case law that we're going to talk about is the National Legal Service Authority versus Union of India, All India Record 2014. Let's see what are the facts. The facts of the case are that the case concerns legal gender recognition of transgender people and whether the lack of legal measures to cater for the needs of persons not identifying clearly as male or female contradicts the constitution. Pre-existing Indian law only recognized the binary genders of male and female and lacked any provision with regard to the rights of transgender people, which advocates in India have also defined as the third gender. The gender of a person has been assigned at birth and would determine his or her rights in relation to marriage, adoption, inheritance, succession, taxation, and welfare. Due to the absence of legislation protecting transgender people, the community faced discrimination in various areas of life. The petitioners were joined by a number of interveners. In this case, the argument was made that the recognition of only the binary gender of male and female under the Indian law and the lack of legal measures to cater for the need of the represented groups contradicted a number of constitutional rights, including the right to a dignified life, equality before the law, non-discrimination and freedom of expression. The atrocities faced by the transgender community from the citizens as well as the state authorities in turn is a violation of their many fundamental rights, including those under Article 14 and Article 21 of the Constitution. Now let's understand what the court held. The court recognized that gender identity is one of the most fundamental aspects of life, which refers to a person's intrinsic sense of being male, female, or transgender or transsexual person. They opined that guarantee to equality and non-discrimination on the ground of gender identity is increasing and gaining acceptance worldwide, and that it can also be applied in India. Transgender people are oppressed and are faced with discrimination in the field of healthcare, employment, education, etc. The court referred to part 21 of the United Nations Convention against torture and other cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment or punishment, wherein it is stated that the states are obli obliged to protect all persons, regardless of their sexual orientation or transgender identity. The court acknowledged the absence of legislation in the country and the necessity to follow the international conventions. The court held that the transgenders are entitled to affirmative action as guaranteed under Article 15, Clause 4, and also to reservation in the matter of appointment. State is bound to take affirmative action to give them due representation in the public services. The court further emphasized on the need for legal recognition of third or transgender identity and concluded that they belong to a distinct socio-religious and cultural group and they must be considered as a third gender apart from male and female. Justice K.S. Radhakrishnan, speaking on behalf of the court, concluded the judgment by holding that discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation or gender identity includes any discrimination, inclusion, restriction or preference which has the effect of nullifying or transposing equality by the law or equal protection of laws guaranteed under our constitution. In light of the aforementioned, it made various declarations and directions to the center and state governments. First, hijras, eunuchs are to be treated as third genders. Number two, transgenders have the right to decide their self-identified gender. Number three, to take steps to treat transgender as socially and educationally backward classes of citizens in case of admission in educational institutions and for public appointments. Number four, governments to operate separate HIV zone, zero surveillance centers. Number five, government to seriously address the problems faced by transgenders. Number six, 
provision for separate public toilet and appropriate me medical care in hospitals. Number eight, uh, number seven, uh, governments to frame various social welfare schemes for the betterment of the transgender. Number eight, governments to create public awareness so that the transgenders will not be treated as touchables. And number nine, take measures to regain the respect and place of transgender in the society which they once enjoyed. Now, another important case in the constitutional rights of transgender persons is Navtej Singh Johar versus Union of India, All India Record 2018. The facts of the case are that the section 377 of the IPC categorized consensual sexual activity between the same sex people as an unnatural offense, which is against the order of nature. It prescribed a punishment of 10 years of imprisonment. NAS Foundation India Trust challenged the constitutionality of Article 377 under Article 14, Article 15, Article 19, and Article 21 for the Supreme Court. The foundation contended that Section 377 reflects an antiquated understanding of the aim of sex, namely as a means of procreating and has no place during a modern society. Further, the police had weaponized supply which impeded efforts aimed towards preventing the spread of HIV AIDS. NAS Foundation Trust challenged the constitutionality of Article 377 under Article 14, 15, 19, and 21 before the Supreme Court. The foundation contended that Section 377 reflects an antiquated understanding of the aim of, of sex, namely as a means of procreation, and has no place during a modern society. Further, the police had weaponized the supply, which impeded effort aims towards preventing the spread of HIV AIDS. The court held that classifying and targeting homosexual violates the equal protection guarantee under Article 14 of the Constitution. Section 377 thus violated human dignity, which forms the core of Indian Constitution. They argue that the right to privacy does not include the right to commit any offense. Decriminalizing homosexuality would be detrimental to the institution of marriage and would lure young people towards homosexual activity. Several curative petitions were filed challenging the Supreme Court order. While the curative petitions against the Suresh Kaushal judgment were pending, Five individuals from the LGBTQ communities noted Bharat Natyam dancer Navteet Singh Johar, restaurateurs Ritu Dal Dalmia and Aisha Kapoor, hotelier Aman Nath and media person Sunil Mehra filed fresh pet petition for scraping section 377 IPC in thus far because it criminalized consensual sex between same-sex individuals. Now, what the court held, the Supreme Court on January 5, 2018, formed a constitutional bench for hearing the challenge to Section 377 during a comprehensive manner, albeit the curative petition were pending before the Supreme Court. This could flow from the observation made within the nine-judge decision within the right to privacy case, which hinted the inherited wrongness of the reasoning and decision in Suresh Kaushal. The five-judge bench of Deepak Mishra, Justice A.M. Khanwalikar, Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, and Justice R.F. Nariman, and Justice Indu Malhotra heard the matter from July 10, 2018. On 6 September 2018, the five-judge bench partially struck down Section 377 of the Indian Penal Code, decriminalizing same-sex relations between consenting adults. LGBT individuals are now legally allowed to engage in consensual intercourse. The court has upheld provisions in Section 377 that criminalize non-consensual acts or sexual acts performed on animals. The four judgments unanimously cited fundamental right violations. In reading down Section 377, they found that it, decriminal, uh, that it discriminates against individuals on the idea of their sexual orientation and or identity violating Article 14 and 15 of the Constitution. Further, they ruled that Section 377 violates the right to life, dignity, and autonomy of private choice under Article 21. Finally, they found that it inhibits an LGBT individual's ability to completely realize their identity by violating the proper, uh, by violating the freedom to expression under Article 19, Clause 1A. Thank you so much.